Team Secret beat Paper X 2. Oh, yes, I know. It's crazy, isn't it? And uh, today, what we're going to take a look at is how Team Secret managed to exploit the no Sentinel comp here of Paper X on this map. Let's start by taking a look at round number three here, the bonus round for Team Secret, where what we're going to see is pretty much a, a big part of their game plan, uh, where we've got four players stacked towards A, and it looks like they're going to do a first A hit, but then they don't. Weaponry. That just allows for Team Secret to do a little bit more as they continue to push up very quickly into the A oh, site. Man. Paper X, they've been spotted. Yeah, the fact that you get the tag through the smoke onto something, but then you spot Forsaken as well, that's the site for free. I mean, there's no way that Paper X is defending this one. The real question is, is how is the post plant look with the weaker weaponry on Team Secret? They're waiting still, the spike not quite entering yet. The smokes have to get refreshed. So the plant can't go through. And during all of this, NDG clears out B site. And since they never committed the spike, Team Secret has a chance to rotate. Paper X does start to get a read. Starting to move back. The timing of it, though. Jeremy still left alone on elbow. But those kills, right? Jeremy being oh, on so elbow. Question marks. Yeah, that ties up Paper X. Now they just have to hold in mid and be ready for a rotate. And NDG has the timing to potentially catch them as they rotate through. Oh, the angle. Not able to take the heads up duel. The angle favors NDG. Just like you mentioned, Will. Spike going down now. But it's up to Devai and Jing. They're a little bit too far apart. Jing might have just heard Envy, but look at that movement. So quick, so sharp, and Jesse Vash. Okay, so let's take a look at that round then. And the first thing is Paper X, I think, off the rip have made a mistake here, right? Uh, and their mistake here is that they're playing no Sentinel. You can't be this passive. Like, this is as the round is starting, you can't be this deep as a team. Like, when the barriers drop, you cannot all be this deep playing no sense. Like, that's their first problem, which you would think is, like, not a very Paper Rex type problem, but I do think it kind of was a problem maybe at the start of this game. Um, now, as we roll this round forward, obviously, Team Secret, they come and do what looks like a fast A exec, and, and perhaps at the beginning of the round, it is just meant to be a fast A exec, because... You know, it looks fairly normal to do that uh, at this point in time. And Paper X are playing this comp that you would think is going to be good for a retake, right? Like, we're going to have uh, all the, you know, the Raze Util or the Gecko Util. We still got our Omen Flash. We still got all this, you know, KO Util as well. Like, you think like, oh, this is going to be a nasty retake that, the you know, that they're going to come in on. Um, so perhaps Team Secret, you know, knew that that's what was going to happen. And they knew that like, hey, this retake is going to be strong. So let's actually not play for that because we get this look coming all the way through B instead. Obviously, again, abusing the fact that they have no Sentinel. But really, it goes a bit deeper than that because we get to this point here where they haven't planted. And Paper X get the idea. As the guys on commentary were kind of mentioning, like, Paper X, you know, they start to be like, oh, they haven't planted yet. That's a bit weird. And then something is pushing all the way up. Right, so he actually re-clears this on his own, gets one kill and thinks, okay, yeah, that was the lurker that they were leaving there. But then Jeremy gets this kill. And then at this point, I think Paper X have no idea what's going on. Right, because it's like, okay, well, your raise is actually still there. You know, so so now they don't they don't know which way to go. Right? They don't know what's going on. This, they know that this raise is still here. So it's like, where are they? Right? Like, why Why has the spike not been planted? They aren't on A. I mean, at this point, my like, well, they aren't actually on A site. So they must have left, right? So you see that these guys, then, you know, Forsaken starts turning towards B instead. So it's a very, very confusing round for Paper Rex. But this is the things that you can kind of exploit as NDG then gets that kill. Right? And now, you know, they're still here. I mean, Jing... You know, does a double take there, but then Envy is still here as well, so they still have another player who's over towards A. And you could tell that Paper X were just very confused about what was going on. But this, you know, is a great way of exploiting Paper X, exploiting their comp, essentially. And we're going to see that this happened basically multiple times here to Paper X. Okay, now let's skip ahead to the next gun round, round number five, where we're going to see the same thing. And I would say the same thing to Paper X again. They're actually coming off a timeout as well. Okay, they've got this kind of weird triple stack here, you know, to fight in mid. Okay, kind of a cool idea, I suppose, in a way. Uh, but again, the, I, I have a problem with this setup for the comp they're playing again, right? Like, we got passive here on B, we're passive here on A. You know, if we get smoked off in mid, our, our whole idea is kind of crumbling. I, I, I don't personally love it, even though it is, you know, kind of cool. And there's, you know, you've got the three different levels here. Of the players, like, okay, that's kind of unique. It's kind of cool. It's like a little Paper X idea or whatever. But to me, it's too passive on the parts of the map that Team Secret had really only been going to. They hadn't been going to mid a lot, right? But now we're, we're passive on A. We don't know if they're walking past, the, you know, up on A. Uh, we don't know what's going on towards B until now because the KO knife does suppress a lot of people, right? So after suppressing like three, four people maybe in here, 
Paper Ranks eventually, you know, start to come towards the B site, realizing that that's where the majority of the players are. Um, but now, as the drone comes and reclears uh, back into mid for Team Secret, you're going to see that something here makes a very, again, bold, brave play, kind of a round winning play, to be honest, which is to come here and push mid, right? So again, they're in a good spot here to, you know, kind of win the round, essentially. At this point, you look at the map and it's like, well, this round is over. Right, because something has a very fast flank if they want it. But again, take a look at where NDG is. And so what you're going to see now is, again, Team Secret, they're going to pressure in here. They're actually going to go for a silver ult here and get a, a, get a kill. But then again, we've got NDG who's just walking up. So he's choosing his timing based off this silver ult when he thinks the pressure, when he thinks these guys are going to rotate. That's when he starts to push up. But even so, something is in position to destroy this, right? To either get the info that, hey, they're rotating, everyone go back to A, you know, potentially kill multiple players here, but instead he gets baited in as well and tries to come back to B and dies. Be the big one here. The dark cover, it's a bit of fake pressure. So NDG, he's wary of it. I don't think he's going to check us back, but he's, he's got the trip. The real question is, is does right. he call for the rotate? They're still what? not entering. Oh, Jesse Bash gets the ping all the way into back corner. And oh they even check God. for something on the rotate as well. And NDG's already cleared out a site. The I mean, the Lurks. Ultimate. Now they're from the shadows. And the Lurks are just incredible from, from Team Secret on this map so far. Incredibly slippery with it. Paper Rex now struggling with the shots a little too. Here. Losing confidence. They know they have to retake with the paranoia. Watching out for Jesse Vash as well. I mean, could he have gone back through mid, or is he actually pushed up into its spawn? Mind Freak Divine, they need to watch for this. Now that you get that kill, you okay. go for it, since it's a 2v2, but already time is not on your side. Forsaken's only got 6 oh, HP. Oh, that fault line. So annoying. Now Borka with the off angle. The shrouded step does not work. I, I, you have to save at this point. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't really have much of a way out. But Paper X did start to come back in this first half. As you can kind of see by round nine, uh, they've won three rounds in a row. And they were kind of exploiting the fact that Team Secret weren't really lurking through mid a lot. It was a lot just to do with kind of, you know, B main and A main. So, for instance, you've got setups that maybe look like this, right? Where we get the Viper Spit early in towards B main. And, you know, Team Secret are just staring at a Viper Spit. And it's like, are you really going to go through that? Mm, I don't know about that. But then they're also getting aggressive in A main here as well and pushing up, right? And so what this kind of setup now means is the KO knife comes in and suppresses everyone. And so it's like, oh, the jig is up, right? What that means is if NDG is going to come and lurk here on his own, well, he's running into someone who's pushed up. You know, he's going to get spotted early. He's not going to be able to tell everyone to just come back across the map, right? And so this was kind of what Paper X figured out, that this is how they had to play, you know, around this at this point, right? So if we just, you know, for instance, take a look at the map now, Paper X are in a really good spot, right? They've got deep B main control. They've got good A main control. You know, they've got their players back into mid now as well to fight this. I do think the one thing Paper X could have done more is shut the door here on B. Uh, I think when you're playing No Sentinel on this map, you should be shutting the door a lot, right? Just as an information tool, because if it doesn't get destroyed, that's really good information, right? It will get destroyed in most instances, probably, but if it doesn't, then that's good information. I do think Divine makes a mistake here, though, as well, and this is something that... I wish Paper X would have done more also, which is he just starts coming back here, you see, and then he puts down this one way. But to me, just, just, you know, they were all the way up here. Just like chill here and just put down this one way, right? Just literally just chill in this spot just here. Stop putting down your one ways. Just hold this, right? Don't come back and like, oh, maybe he's timing me. Maybe he's walked up, right? Don't, don't give them that for free, essentially. And then uh, again, this is where I think Paper X sometimes can just get a bit too aggressive, where they're going to take this mid fight in here again. And you know, do they need to, right? Because again, they're in a good position in this round, right? We've got B main control, you know, again, Divide probably should be up here, just, just watching this, right? Keeping A main control at this point. And then you just make them, you know, do something, right? Make them take some space against you. But it is Paper X, and they were still win the round. So with mid, sure, you contest a little bit with paint shells, but you've given it up. You know that the attackers have the better angles. All you have to do is make sure you're not giving away top mid. It's too late to try to shut off this door over by market. But something will just hold on to it. Overall, the default position, yeah, you're a little spread out. But it's not the end of the world. Because a site, as long as Devi can get out, you can go for a retake. Ooh. They caught something instead, though. Oh, the peak out. Mid. I mean, Paper X still struggling to hold on to the defaults yeah. for a little bit too long. 
it's just, it makes them feel restless. And now it's no longer a question of whether or not Devi can rotate out. He has to actually stay alive long enough on the site. Oh, he waits out the timing, catches the spike carrier, and now Forsaken strikes in! Oh, and then the paranoia as well, and DG has no idea! But it wasn't just their defense side that they lost on it, it was also their attack side as well for Paper X. And you might think that their comp, you know, is going to be a very good attack side comp, but it didn't really work out that way. Uh, and let's take a look at this round because this one is the first full buy round for both teams. And it starts off perfectly fine for Paper X, right? They're going to end up in like a bit of a 1 3 1 default here. Uh, you know, and, and nothing really is wrong, right? I mean, Jing's walking into B main and he doesn't see anyone there. They, you know, come into mid and they don't see anything in here either, right? So they take quite a bit of space early on. And I honestly think in this round, they actually get confused by how passive Team Secret are, right? Because Jing, he's taken B main all by himself, right? They've walked into mid here, they've destroyed the door. You know, they've done this smoke. They haven't seen anyone, right? So at this point, I mean, and this maybe is a little weird from, from my freak in this kind of scenario because you might think like, okay, we've walked into B main. We've walked into mid. We haven't seen anyone. Maybe there's an A stack, right? And you'll see he's just kind of playing around with the one ways that uh, uh, Borkum is doing here, right? He puts up his setup to get past this one way. He then comes back. He then does it again. But then he drops it again here when he's past the one way. And he's just, li he is literally just fishing for a fight on his own, right? In what you might suspect, considering we've got, you know, decent control as well on the map, you might suspect that this is two people here, if not more, right? Instead, it is just a 1v1, um, but he's just opening himself up to a lot of different positions and ends up dying as Borkham swings and he's looking the wrong way. So that's not a great start for Paper X, a bit off there, but now I think that they do get confused, right? I think that, okay, we've seen Borkham kind of, you know, aggressively defending A, there must be someone else there with him, so let's come and go B fast, I guess. You know, let's just go B now. And especially when this KO knife I don't think suppresses anyone, then they're like, okay, well, there's one player here, right? No one else is here, surely. But actually, Team Secret are just playing super, super deep. And so now what you'll see is as Paper X are coming in, we're going to get Jing. He's just like, okay, press the go button. He's going to run into a trip. We're going to get Divide just swinging out here. He's going to die up here as well. Then Forsaken's Lurk is going to get caught out. And Team Secret were just seemingly very aware of what Paper X were going to do and confusing them in some rounds as well. And this was basically what Paper X's attack side was for a lot of this map. It was either stuff like this or it was fast hits that the timings weren't quite there or it just wasn't going that well. Um, and it wasn't that great for Paper X and they lost. Just catches him with a sudden movement, sudden peak. I mean, they've never quite cleared these. Forsaken's trying to flank again. I don't know if he's going to be enough enemy enough enemy. to catch him. It's not quite there. Envy finds him instead. Jeremy with a showstopper. Something only able to get the one.